Hi there. Welcome to another C Sharp tutorial. This tutorial we will continue experimenting with for loops in order to identify how we could do some simple tricks. Okay. So the first uh, or uh, the theme for today or the things we think we are going to do today is not solving a problem uh, like mathematics or you know calculating sums or average or uh, profit or something like that, but rather something a little bit of fun, hopefully, which is making stars fall from the top of the display to the bottom. Okay, um, so one of the things we need to know to do that is to set the cursor position. Basically, you could say system console set a set cursor position. Okay, and you open the bracket here, you should specify left location, let's say 7, 7. Okay, and then we say system console right. For example, this is a star. So far, so good. And finally, we say system console read line. Semicolon. Okay, so let us try this out. And you can see the stars appearing here on the screen. Okay. Now, one of the things, uh, uh, if if you uh, see, uh, if you have an idea of how cartoon works, uh, the animation you see or the movement is basically uh, uh, you are seeing different frames. Uh, the, the previous location is cleared and the star moves to a new location which is a little bit further okay and this happens a little bit quickly so it gives the illusion that uh, there is motion so we will try to do that now in order to make uh, a star fall from the top screen of the screen to the bottom we need to do we could do a for loop over here so here we are going to say for int i equals 0, i smaller than, let's say, I think it's 20 characters the height of this screen, and i plus plus, let's say something like that, uh, or make it maybe 30, let's try this out. And then, what are we going to do? We are going to say system console write star semicolon. Let us just try to do that, right? Uh, I'm going to save this and let us, uh, oops, for that, I would say system console set cursor position, let's select number 7. Now, I want the location, the y axis, to be i. What this means that there is, a, when i is 0, you leave zero rows from the top. When i is 1, you leave one row from the top. When i is 10, you leave 10 lines from the top. Okay? So now we will run this. You can see now we have displayed all these and this happens so fast uh, you, you can't... You, you would think that this all appeared right away. Okay, let me just use this to 20. Let us run this. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is being displayed very fast. Now, we need to slow this down a little, okay? And uh, to do that, I will do a few things here. I will have to ask the computer to waste some time, okay? So, one way to do that is to say sleep, uh, right? Oh, okay. System threading uh, thread sleep something like for example 100 milliseconds. Now, what this command does, okay? Although we didn't, uh, we are taking, uh, we we don't know about this command. But basically, what this command does, it will tell the computer to wait for tenth of a second okay maybe we could make this uh, yeah I think maybe half a second okay and now we will run this okay so you can see now the star is moving down 
Now the problem here is that the previous star is not being removed, so you would think that, uh, uh, you know, you don't have the feeling that the star is moving. In order to do that, we need to remove the previous one. So, we'll do a small change over here. Uh, here I will put one. Okay. I'll copy this statement. So first thing I'm gonna set the location here to i minus one. So the cursor will go to the previous position and it will put a space. Okay? And then it will go to the next position and it will put a star. When i goes to the next value, for example, change it from one to two, the previous star which was printed here will be removed and replaced by space and new star will be displayed over here. Okay, so let us run this. Okay, and you see now the star is kind of moving. Now let us reduce this timer. Okay. Okay, but around if you want to make things a little bit faster, you could just do what? You could just say uh, 100. Okay, and now you have a star that is falling. So far, so good. Now, what if you want the falling of the star be continuous? Well, all you have to do is this. Uh, just say for semicolon, semicolon, close that. Now, here we don't have a, a starting condition, we don't have an ending condition, we don't have an increment. All we are going to have is repeated execution for this statement. So, we are going to run this. Check this out. Nice. And it's being repeated. And when this one ends, the last star needs to be removed. So, we will have to do a little bit of work over here. Okay. So, uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. wait a second. We will just add this bracket over here. It's a bracket. Now, at the end of uh, this one, okay, the star at the very end need to be cleared. So we will put this one here. Okay, uh, here I will be 21. Uh, so basically, it's 20. Right? Oh, wait a second. So let's run this out and hope it will work fine. Okay, now it's working fine. So we, after this, we are clearing it. Now, this is nice, right? What are we gonna do next is uh, kind of improving on this. Okay? So instead of remembering or using I here, Okay, I will remove I altogether from this part. Uh, yeah, I will do it like this. Now you might be wondering how will this work? Well, we will do this thing. Int st1 equal uh, zero. Okay, and int ost1 equals zero. Now ost1 will be used to store the all the star location, and st1. I'm gonna change this to an st1, which is the new star location. So this is gonna be what uh, ost1 and st1. And what am I going to do here? I'm going to say OST1 uh, equals OST1 plus 1 all of this modulus 20. Okay, so this will make sure that our value is between 0 and 19. Okay, and and, uh, sorry, it's not the O, I'm very sorry. Here, this should be N. And here we have N. 
Next we have OST1 equal. Uh, wait a second. Okay, so we have OST1 equal NST1. We need to remember this one before this. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one will not be needed. Okay, so let us try this. And you can see now it's working infinitely. Okay, so why did I do that? Well, because I want to add more stars. Okay, so I will add about. Okay, so here we have what? We have two, two, three, three, four, four. Okay. So here this is going to be 7 for example, this is going to be 19, 19, this is going to be a th a 10, okay, and in addition to that, this is the for the first one, right? I'll repeat this code for the second one. Oops. Now, for the second one, I will use the location 14. Okay, the x axis is changed. Okay, so I don't want it to write at the same location, otherwise, I won't distinguish that there is another star. Okay, and for the third one, Okay, now instead of 14, let's say 21, 21, and for the last one, we will try doing what? Uh, let's see, uh, yeah, this is number 4, 4, instead this is going to be 28, 28, and this is going to be 4, and four and four and four. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay, so the important part here is that I mean, part of the exercise here is that here the for loop has no starting, uh, no stopping condition, no increment, no whatever. So basically, it's an infinite loop. So this program will be running forever. And you can see now these stars kind of falling, hopefully. Hopefully, the, well, it's not a good simulation, but whatever. So, uh, yeah, I think we need to add more stars into that. But regardless, what I need also to write is to go and put this one here. Mm, let's say is what 18 uh, maybe 16 but 16 location 10 happy new year yay okay so uh yeah so just want to say Happy New Year in a strange way. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's all for today's tutorial about for loops. A for loop with no condition this is ideal for displaying Happy New Year infinitely. Okay, thanks for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.